Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In my previous video, I mentioned that I was done with this bike. As in, the project has been finished. So, that begs the question, what is my next project? If I'm finished with this bike, what is the next bike for me to work on? Well, this is a bike which I haven't really featured much on this channel. This is my... 2004 Honda Nighthawk CB250 nicknamed the avocado and it's been great this is my daily rider it's uh, so reliable it has never skipped a beat uh, basically I had to change a the battery and but it, it just goes and it goes everywhere um, and it's just just super reliable super happy bike when I first got this bike I had thoughts of turning it into a scrambler so i was thinking of putting a high fender chopping the frame getting rid of the plastic fair um fairings and then putting on like an ebay seat knobbly tires um changing up the handlebars i had plans of doing a taco and indicator light idiot light <laughs> delete and just putting this into the middle changing out the, these dinky headlights and lights and just turning it into this really cool and mean lightweight black scrambler but I don't think I'm going to do that and I'll explain why I think the main reason is this bike is too new <laughs> um, let me explain so in Australia, and I'm not sure if it's the same overseas, but in Australia, you can register your bike under club plates. So, see how the Kawasaki has red plates and this has the white plates. If your bike is older than 25 years old, then you can put it on club plates and then you can just select the amount of days that you want to ride it. So, for example, Full rego on a motorcycle of this size will be around 500 bucks. Club plates is like $60. $60 to ride the bike 90 days of the year. In the ideal world, you'll have four bikes or vehicles, a combination of bikes and cars, all on club plates, all on $90, sorry, 90 day plans or Reg registration and you'll be able to ride throughout the year the thing is with this bike it's 2004 so if I wanted to put it on club plates I'll have to wait till 2029 is that right yeah <laughs> and I don't think it's worth it um, aside from that I don't think I want to spend the money that it would take to turn this into a scrambler. I think it will be a sick concept, but it's just not going to be something that I'm interested in right now. Because guys, the fact is, I need money. <laughs> um, in my previous video, I talked about how I was in the process of purchasing a business and then the bank turned around and withdrew their loan. Um, so right now, the opportunity is still out there and what I've decided for myself is that I'm going to try and sell as many things as possible and we're just going to grind and hustle and try to save up as much money as we can so that next year, when we're in that same scenario, we won't have to rely so heavily on the bank. And so with all of that taken into account, I think I'm going to try and sell this bike. and. I might get a lot of shit for this, but I think I think I might look into buying an electric bicycle. Or maybe something else, who knows? <laughs> Over the past few weeks I've been looking at other bikes. I even test rode a really cool, like already customized Kawasaki EL250, which is the is that the intruder? Um, and I'll, I'll put up a video of it. I was 
very close to to buying it but unfortunately I missed out because I was still waiting on selling this. Right now I'm torn between the two. Do I buy something super cheap like a electric bicycle? Do I buy another bike which is older and then I can put it on club rego? Um, or do I just walk to work? I'm taking on a lot more shifts at the cafe, like six days a week. And it's just down the road. It's not that far. Like I could walk there in half an hour. But I've been doing a lot of opening shifts and I don't really want to walk that far in the morning because it does get cold but anyways this is where i'm at at the moment i'll keep you guys updated because i'm gonna meet up with this guy tomorrow um he seems to be pretty keen so who knows maybe tomorrow we'll have to say goodbye to the avocado He absolutely loved the bike. He was going around for little joy rides around. He's, he just got his L plates a few months ago, so this will be a perfect bike for him as a starter. Um, I'm happy with the sale, I'm happy with the price, but it's a little bit bittersweet because it's such a sick bike. But I think this is uh, a good, I think this is a good thing. I'm pretty happy with this sale. There's meant to be a vintage bike meetup here in like half an hour, but I'm freezing my balls off. And I think it's going to storm. And I rode like an hour to get here. So I think I'm going to go back home. But bike is pretty much sold. He paid a deposit. Time to get roadworthy. And then we'll ship it off to him. Exciting times. I'll see you guys in a bit. Alright, so I'm in Brunswick at the moment. I'm about to meet up with someone uh, to have a look at their e-bike. And uh, if I like it, I will probably buy it. <laughs> I think I want it. <laughs> So I was so close to buying the bike because we haggled down to 1000 and then I transferred money over, went back to him, he said no, 1200 and then I had a look at the bike and I was just thinking I can't really justify that amount for that price, like it's a cool, it's a cool little electric bike but can't really justify that amount of money for that. I think a part of me really wanted it and a part of me was really excited to own that cruiser bike and put a milk crate on it um, but I think at the end of the day this is sensible and um, I might just keep an eye out for something cheaper or maybe like a really like a, a cheaper motorcycle so we'll see we'll see sorry to get your hopes up <laughs> All right, back at home. So, yeah, um, unfortunately, I didn't buy that cruiser bike. As I was saying, I just couldn't really justify spending $1,200 on that. It's essentially going to be like a, a toy. I mean, it would have had its use, but I've, I've got this habit of just wanting to spend money, and I really need to address that because at the end of the day, I'm doing all of this. I'm selling this Honda because I want to save money. So yeah, I think um, I need to sort of do a little bit of thinking about that. But anyways, I figured that before I buy anything, we just need to sell this Honda. So um, I'll just catch you guys up. I ended up agreeing with the seller. Um, I took it in for a roadworthy and unfortunately it failed. And I need to replace three things. So number one is the headlight. You can see at the top it's cracked so I just need to replace this thing um, I think I'm just going to go get in like a car headlight for like 20 bucks you can buy them online secondly is this uh, high beam low beam 
apparently you need a little button on that which I think is pretty stiff of them but um, I've got an idea uh, on how I can che um, fix that up pretty cheaply and then lastly which I'm going to tackle today is this bike uh, the neutral light doesn't come on so I did a bit of research and the engine in this bike is the same engine that goes into the Honda Rebel 250s and it's a known issue for the neutral sensor um, to get dirty so most bikes the neutral sensor is behind this cover but in this engine it's actually behind this cover so it's submerged in oil and that's why it gets dirty so um, what we're going to do is we're going to try our best to remove this engine side cover and have a look at that neutral sensor hopefully it's just dirty and I can clean it and it'll work but uh, if it needs replacing that's like 20 bucks as well so first things first I'm going to drain the oil then I need to remove this and then that to take this off and then take this off all right let's get to it That bolt won't come off at all, um, and I'm starting to strip it. Oh, thank God. That was way too difficult. All right, let's take the side covers off now. All right, so this is a little bit different to what I was expecting, to be honest. I thought it was going to be right here, but there's uh, two things I'm looking at. It might be this thing here, because there's like a little sensor, or it might be behind here. And what I'm seeing is, see this cable? It's just a bit frayed. So I'm going to test this cable first and see if I get any reaction up there on the neutral light. Also, check out this oil. It's so watery. Definitely need to change that out. Alright, I have found the cause. So, I actually forgot I had one of these test lights. So I've just grounded it. And then I've got this little alligator clip. And I've just clipped it into this sensor here. And then when I hit on the switch... Is it working? Oh, there we go. See that? Alrighty, so that's good. So, uh, I'm just grounding it through the engine. So, what this means is that the sensor still works. I think it's actually just this cable, which, um, as you can see, let me see if I can zoom in. It's like pretty frayed and shitty. So that's good because I'm, I'm just going to cut this and put on another clip. And hopefully that should fix the whole thing. So that's good. Hopefully that fixes it. Actually guys, bad news. So I just noticed that this uh, female terminal is connected to the wiring harness. And this part here that I need to replace is actually connected to the switch, which I think is behind this. So 
there's every chance that even if I do fix this terminal, then uh, it still won't work because there's every chance that the switch behind here is dirty or um, broken. So uh, we're going to have to somehow take that switch out and then test it. So bear with me, I'm going to figure out how to do that. And the sensor is behind this plate. And I don't know if I can take it off without taking this thing off. And I really don't want to do that. Um, so there was a chain around here which joins up to the starter motor over here. It's definitely not my first time messing around with this stupid mechanism. Um, but in order for me to get that back on, I need to take the starter motor out, but that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and remove this bolt here and see if that will hopefully loosen this plate and then I can reach behind because I really don't want to take this off. Bingo. Alright, so we can take it off a little bit. Hopefully that's enough to see what's going on. Inside. See that little thing there? That gold thing? That's what I need to get to. Get to. Alright guys, we made a bit of progress. So I removed the uh, switch without having to take this out. It was a pain in the ass. It's like right in that little hole down there. So I had to remove a little bolt. And then I used these uh, surgical pliers and gripped it and then pulled it out. So I ended up uh, soldering this piece so that it's uh, it won't be frayed anymore. I also took some sandpaper to that edge or to that end, sorry, and just sort of cleared this ground as well. And now, oh, let's turn the key on, that would help. Much better. That, I have a feeling that it's been ground down because what I'd imagine is that every time you sort of shift from first to neutral or second to neutral and if the shifter is like sort of still moving, then it will sort of sand down that brass piece. Um, and so I have a feeling that it's no longer making contact with the, with the corresponding piece inside the engine. So I think we have to replace this anyways, but I'm going to reinstall it and just see if it works with, um, now that it's cleaned. So wish me luck. All right, it's reinstalled. Let's hope for the best. Do we have a neutral? No, we don't. Is it a neutral? Damn. All right. Yep. So we definitely need to replace it. That's okay. That's a, that's to be expected. Actually, hold on. Does the kickstand need to be down? No, nope, still not on. All right. Well, that's to be expected. We'll order in a new part of that. Um, but at least now we know. Alright guys, so just a quick update. I tried different ways of fixing the headlight. I thought it would be pretty simple. I ended up buying like one of those um, 7 inch halogen lights uh, for cars, which was around 25 bucks, but it didn't fit properly. So that's all good, I'm returning that. I actually have a mate who has a warehouse full of bikes and he's got a few CB250s and he said that he'll help me out and he can uh, lend me a headlight. So I'm going to head over there now. I'm bringing beers, and um, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be good. We're gonna have a good time. All right, guys, we finally got all the parts in. Um, I'll just show you what I got. So, this is the old 
neutral switch and I bought a replacement one. Hopefully you can see, but the new one has a much larger contact point than the original one. So I'm hoping that's going to fix it. And if it doesn't, I'm going to be in, in a bit of a pickle. So fingers crossed for that one. I also got a new uh, oil drain bolt. And then I also just bought a replacement uh, taco cable. I got all of this from a website called wemoto.com.au. One of my favorite uh, websites in Australia to get uh, parts for these old Japanese bikes. And also, I got one of these things uh, to put over the high beam light. I'm going to fit them all on. I'm hoping it's going to be nice and smooth because um, I just want to get this bike done, you know? So, let's get to it. So my neighbor is a nurse and she lent me these surgical pliers and they're so good. I need to get some of these for myself. They're almost like vice grips. So you just squeeze it in and then this part locks in and now you can just push it in. Awesome. So that's connected. <sighs> I'm so nervous. Hopefully the neutral light now works. I think it's in neutral, isn't it? Yep, it's in neutral. So let's get the key. And hopefully the neutral light comes on. No. No neutral. So the neutral light still isn't coming on. Uh, so I'm going to try and figure it out. Guys, I am feeling so defeated right now. Let me just give you a quick rundown of what I got up to. So, um, neutral light won't come on. I don't know why. And um, I won't bore you guys with the details with that. But I took this cover off over here. Just to see if, um, just to inspect the, the gear selector or whatever mechanism that connects to the gear selector on the other side. And I couldn't find the issue. Now, in opening this, I tore the gasket and so now the bike leaks, which sucks. Um, so I just tried putting oil into it and it was just leaking all over the place. So I've drained it again. Um, what else? I'm just trying to retrack, like, backtrack what I've been doing. I took this off, took that off, refitted the the switch, and the neutral switch, and it wouldn't work. And I was just about ready to give up. Um, I I thought that in my mind I've absolutely fucked the bike up, and I was going to fail the roadworthy, and this bike was going to be a lemon. So. I was just packing up and I was just just about ready to give up. Now I just tried to turn the bike on. And the neutral light is on. And I'm so bloody confused. Hold on, um it's in neutral right now. I'm going to I'm going to put it on the center stand, and then I'm going to switch through the gears. Jesus Christ, bear with me. Alright, key on. Neutral switch is on. Um, we're obviously in neutral. Alright, let's uh, put it into first gear. Okay. Neutral light is always on. What the hell? is going on. Uh, I can only guess that... Okay, option one, or the most likely option or reason is that when I reinstalled it, the neutral light is just grounding onto something. So I'll look at that. But what I'm thinking it might be is what I did was I drained the oil, I put in new oil, and because it was leaking, I flushed that oil out. So maybe all it needed was some clean oil to get rid of all that crap? I don't know. I'm so 
confused. So all I did was put oil in. I reinstalled everything just as I just as it was. So so confused guys. I'm so sorry guys, this video is just all over the place now. Um I'm really confused. I'm really confused. I'm I'm going to, it's getting it's getting dark now. I'm going to park it, you know what? I think I think I need to just walk away from this bike for today. Um Neutral light now works. I don't know why and I don't know how, but I'm not gonna fix it today. I think I figured out what the issue is and it was something that I've been a bit suspicious of from the get-go. Um, the thing is, the neutral switch that I've installed and the entire circuit works, right? But what's happening is when I'm switching gears, I can't really see anything moving and nothing is making contact with the switch. Well, the thing is, at the bottom end of the motor, there's something called a, uh, a rotor drum, which is essentially a the gearbox of a motorcycle. And right at the end of this rotor, there's something called a rotor neutral switch. Now, my understanding is, as you shift gears, the rotor spins, and then that neutral switch on the rotor is what makes contact with the neutral switch on the outside. I'll put up a diagram just to illustrate that. In order for me to get to that, I'm going to have to take this engine all apart, completely apart. Um, and that's going to take a lot of time and effort. And I've just sort of come to the realization and I've accepted the fact that I'm not going to pass this roadworthy. Without the roadworthy, this bike can't be on the road and I won't be able to sell it, which really sucks. And I'm trying my best not to be bummed out about it, but I'm just going to take this as a loss. I'm going to park this bike for now and it's going to be a project for a later day. I honestly thought, guys, that I was going to sell this bike super easily within the week. Uh, even to the fact that I placed a deposit on another motorcycle, which I got for an absolute steal. I'm not going to reveal what that bike is just yet. You'll have to tune in for another video, but I'll give you a bit of a hint. It's uh, an old vintage bike, 1982, and it's a 250cc motorcycle. Uh, and I got it for dirt cheap. So stay tuned for that bike reveal. Um, and thank you so much if you're still watching this video. Uh, thank you for joining me on this roller coaster of emotion and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.